In the modern era, where every corner of the world has its own unforgettable feats of engineering, the story of the Gupatan ship elevator from the rugged Guizhou Highlands in China still stands out. It goes way beyond imagination as it lifts 500-ton vessels about 200 meters toward the sky. All of its power comes from expertly engineered hydraulic cylinders and steel cables. In the Gupatan ship elevator's book, the effort begins with megatons of cargo and progresses with lengthy meters of vertical ascents. Its story began on the Wuzhang Waterway, which is a tributary carving through limestone gorges. The time was when the engineers decided to build a dam on the river to produce electricity. That's also when an important shipping route was severed. Every barge and freighter was dead-ended. However, the need to reconnect the east and west was ever persistent, even if they would need something akin to a miracle to get it done at this point. And this is where the role of the Gupatan Hydropower Station's navigation project makes itself known. 137 kilometers away from the Wu River Basin, it was a three-stage behemoth designed to specifically carry ships up a shocking 65-story cliff of water. We're talking around 199 meters of height differences. Now, this lift's working process can be split into three stages. First comes the 72-meter lift, followed by a 127-meter vertical drop, which is, by the way, the tallest in the world, and finally, the lift makes a 47-meter sweep into the reservoir. And it's true that each stage is a hydraulic wonder as a standalone. Together, however, they turn into a 2.3-kilometer corridor of powerful machinery and engineering in the water. The beauty of it all is that this is a journey that would have taken days by road as it was used to in the past. So today's video is all about learning about how the Gupatan ship elevator works with the power of hydraulic engineering. How about we start by exploring the very first stage? Stage one is the first rise. For this incredible piece of machinery, the journey begins downstream. Its first step is a vertical lift, hushed within concrete walls, its water level dancing with the downstream river. At 72 meters, it's a heavyweight, capable of handling any 500-ton barge that approaches it. It has two rows of cable drums that grip thick steel ropes, also powerful gearboxes working under immense loads. It's quite a stunning sight when the hydraulic fluid forces it upward. Trusting valves and seals carefully brought together with world-class engineering to hold millions of PSI in check, the lift's operators complete the first stage easily. Stage 2 is the world's tallest climb. It's 127 meter of vertical might, the tallest single lift in the world. Imagine stacking two football fields end-to-end, -end, then hauling a half a million kilogram ship straight up the face. No small feat. The gear, developed by Stromag, brings a spin with calculated accuracy and is capable of handling peak loads that would, no doubt, flatten lesser machines. Ten minutes here, ten minutes there, and the ship is flawlessly transported across aqueducts that have been suspended like crystal bridges through mountain air. Stage 3 is the final ascent. With one more pressurized push, the journey is completed in record time. Seeing such a marvel of engineering naturally would make anyone curious about how it all became possible in the first place. Well, you'll find that each lift seems somewhat simple. But this simplicity belies the actual complexity of many important steps, like synchronizing the loads. So a single seal failure or a burst hose could send a torrent of fluid slicing through steel or turning a cylinder into a deadly projectile. Every inch of cable, every valve, and every weld bears the scrutiny of expert engineers. Maintenance crews have to go out of their way to inspect cable drums, tensioners, and pulley sheaves. There is no margin for error when 500 tons of steel and cargo dangle in a potentially precarious position. Building the ship elevator demanded more than expert engineering. It required taking on and dealing with the Earth itself, meaning understanding the landscape and geography of the area. Now, the Guizhou Plateau is a labyrinth of karst formations. There are caves, sinkholes, sheer cliffs, and much more to contend with. The construction process must have involved excavators carving tunnels through limestone beds. Then, concrete must have been poured into vertical shafts hundreds of meters deep, while workers installed rebar frameworks that would have made medieval stonemasons weep centuries ago. To get an output like this, a lot of efforts are first undertaken by the engineers. 
It's fascinating to imagine how, at the height of construction, thousands of laborers must have been needed. They would have made steel reinforcements and hydraulic jacks to test the concrete strength before the first cable was wound. And every stage has to line up perfectly. A few centimeters off, and the lifts wouldn't meet their aqueducts, leaving ships stuck mid-ascent. Precision is non-negotiable. Today, the ship elevator handles nearly 3 million tons of cargo annually. Ships carrying all sorts of items, from building materials to other products. What once required dozens of trucks along winding mountain roads now flows like a river. Costs plummeted, delivery times shrink, and industries on both sides of China's interior boom with new access to markets. The ship lift project itself was originally a subset of a 5.04 billion yuan or around $777.5 million investment as part of the Dam Cascade. It was with the Saline and Shatdu hydropower stations. Once it opened in June of 2021, it managed to facilitate the movement of a 500-ton cargo ship, the famous Hangdian No. 1. And this was the unforgettable start of its operational service. Think of it like this. Farmers send rice downstream. Factories ship parts upstream. With the lift, the economy is able to perform at its best. And then the energy generated at Gubaton power systems hundreds of kilometers away. In fact, the underground power station of the Gupatan project is the world's largest, with the thinnest tunnel pillar in the Karst region. Sure, the elevator does lift ships, however, the role it performs uplifts local economies, helping form new trade arteries through the heart of China. And the feature that sets the Gupatan apart from its three-stage vertical design is a world-first configuration that basically forms a ship lift museum. Actually, industry experts coined the term to capture its uniqueness. How its vessels are lifted in three separate hydraulic processes, linked by channels and a navigational tunnel, which achieves a total elevation of 199 meters. That's the greatest of any such complex globally. This out-of-the-box sequence allows its characteristic continuous movement as one vessel takes a lift, another one can enter the next, and that vastly improves efficiency. It goes without saying that the Gupatan ship elevator is way more than a feat of engineering. It's actually also a new benchmark in inland waterway transport. And of course, the system's combined 2.3 kilometers of hydraulic lifts and tunnels bring several new concepts to the field of modern ship navigation infrastructure development. If anything, it also gives the world a new manner of moving vessels through landscapes once thought of as impassable. And if you find this marvel of engineering fascinating, you'll surely enjoy our other content, so stay tuned for more and we'll see you next time.